Like Madonna being yanked off stage by a rogue cape, some video games appear just the once, but are enough to last a lifetime. Rewind, play, rewind, play, what is my life? But whether we're in it for the enthralling lore, beautifully crafted game mechanics, or gorgeous visual presentation, some one-time only experiences ought to have been anything but. Thank you for letting me fight in the war. Today I'm going to focus mainly on some of the old gems because that's what I'm really into, but don't forget to put your list down below when we're done here. I'm Peter from WhatCulture.com and here are 10 incredible standalone games that we think desperately need a sequel. Number 10, Impossible Creatures. Bit of a left fielder to start, this is Impossible Creatures or Frankenstein Simulator 2004, an RTS game in which you create awesome or sometimes hilariously pathetic warrior creatures by combining the best bits of the animal kingdom. Introducing the what Culture Ox Vulture, majestic. This is Lob Jockey, meet Rat on a Hot Tin Wolf, and behold the brilliant Gorillant. The possibilities are literally endless. So please, 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 Microsoft, give us a brand spanking new installment. The remastered version on Steam is one thing, but honestly, I need to see this in the Unreal 4 engine. Number nine, Pokemon Snap. Pokemon Snap is amazing. I have countless memories of playing this game with school friends in the noughties, all trying to take the best photos of them all. Nintendo hid dozens of fun secrets in this on-rail photography game, as if the basic premise alone wasn't replayable enough. And despite a few sharp edges and blurry textures, the present presentation was adorable for its time. The notion of a new game being made with the addition of newer generations and the graphics of something like Pokken is all too enticing. Number 8, Haven Call of the King. This one's kind of personal. Haven Call of the King, a title that most people have never heard of, was a cracking game but also a commercial flop. Don't ask me why, the characters, the locations, the lore, the whole thing was A-list cinematic storytelling in my opinion, and its lack of success was a complete injustice. Worst of all, the game ends on a huge cliffhanger, spoiler alert, with the protagonist being changed to a rock and abandoned inside an impenetrable fortress, so, you know, it would be kind of nice to know what the f*** was meant to happen to him in the Council Trilogy. I am losing sleep here. Number 7, Shadow of the Colossus. Oh my god, so pretty. Perhaps the only argument for Shadow of the Colossus not having a sequel is that some things are best left as they are. It would be no mean feat for a development team to recreate the eerie beauty of Shadow of the Colossus, its serene, desolate world that left us equal parts mystified and enchanted, and its groundbreaking mechanics. However, if it could be pulled off, Wild horses couldn't keep me away from revisiting the Forbidden Land. You're very welcome to have a go, Sony, but make sure you nail it. Number six, Bulletstorm. Bulletstorm is not a highbrow work of art. It's full of dick jokes and innards, but it also has a thrilling combat system. Kicking your enemies or attacking them with your energy leash sets them on a slow motion course to a violent death of your choosing, and there are all sorts of toys to play with. The whole thing is like some crazy mixture of Serious Sam, Gears of War, and Time Splits 3, and we loved it despite its flaws. The story had all the structural integrity of a Watsit, and I wound up actively disliking most of the characters by about halfway, but the styling, setting, and core gameplay are all there, so with a bit of a narrative facelift and maybe a deathmatch mode, Bulletstorm 2 could be gold. Number 5, Black. What the f happened here. Considering it was an 06 PS2 release, Black looked absolutely stunning, a real Bobby Dazzler. On top of that, the arsenal of weapons was a complete delight. Everything felt so damn meaty. Enemies would be literally knocked off their feet as you wastefully filled them with 40 rounds, and the destructible environments, which were a relatively uncommon thing for the time, added a whole new dimension to your battles. Codemaster's body count is considered a spiritual successor, but I feel it failed to capture the original spirit of Black, both in its art style and the intensity of its firefights. I'll always hold a torch for a bona fide Black 2. Number 4, Limbo. Limbo is up there in my top 5 indie titles. I've played few games more atmospheric, and fewer still that achieve so much with such a minimalist style. I only wish it had been longer, which is why I'd love to play a second episode. Again, there is actually a spiritual successor on the way. This is Play Dead's next game, called Inside, which bears a number of striking similarities to their first hit. However, call me conservative, but I would just love to see more of this, like note for note. Now don't get me wrong, I'm sure Inside will be fantastic and I do welcome its release, but I literally can't get enough of Limbo and that's not going to change. Number 3, Grim Fandango. It's a little known fact that the words unique, original and innovative were specially created by the OED in 1998 just so people were able to have coherent conversations about Grim Fandango, an adventure game by Tim Schafer in which you play as an afterlife travel agent getting embroiled in film noir hijinks. Schaefer admits that though he always prefers to do new things, there is a huge demand for a sequel. Indeed, in an interview with Kotaku,
Kotaku, he's quoted as saying, Never say never, I've had this urge to make a fully 3D version of El Mara where it's more like an open world game. That's something I've thought about since the 90s. My god. Let's get a petition going right now. Coming soon, Grim Theft Auto San Andrango. Talking of Rockstar, number two, Bully. Bully was an absolute masterclass in sandbox gaming. Rockstar showed that they can take GTA, scale it down and cut it back, leaving just a small schoolboy sized world, but have absolutely no loss of quality whatsoever. The character personalities and relationships carried the game for me, as well as the ability to live vicariously through a delinquent kid, in contrast to my very straight-laced childhood. Bully was everything it promised to be and more, and I'm convinced gamers would come out in their droves to either play a follow-up where Jimmy Hopkins was at college, or simply another school sim set in a brand new location. Best of all, it might be happening. And number one, sorry to be a fanboy, but beyond good and evil. Okay, so first off, as we discussed in our E3 rumours video, I'm well aware that a sequel is supposedly on the way, if teasers, leaks and interviews are to be believed. But it's been so long since it was first announced that I'm really scared it'll turn into the next Star Wars 1313 and become vaporware. I don't want that. Beyond Good and Evil 1 boasts some of the best qualities we've already seen in this list. Beautiful locations, a memorable cast, fun with photos, atmosphere and open ending. There are more reasons for a sequel to be made than I can count. Michelle Ansel always comes across as so passionate for Beyond Good and Evil and I just hope to god that some actual developments are released very, very, very soon. It's way overdue. And that's our list. Now feel free to sound off in the comments below about what you think should have featured. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. You can follow What Culture Gaming on Facebook here and me on Twitter here. I'm Peter from WhatCulture.com and I'll see you soon.